welcome to the channel. Today I am in Ostrobotnia in Finland and with me today I have a wonderful camera, the Leica Q2. We'll uh, test it in this landscape, in this archipelago. Uh, it's a springtime, it's six, seven uh, degrees plus and this is it. Just follow me and follow the channel and thank you very much. When I start to look at this camera, I hold it in my hand, I start to take some photos with it. It's, it's uh, how to say it, it's, uh, it's, it's a really nice grip on the camera. Uh, the thumb have a special grip here and it's easy to maneuver it. It's easy to come into the camera. I don't have to read tons of, of uh, manuals. I have to read a little bit and after two hours or so, I am in the camera and that's really, really nice. I can start to photo shooting quite directly and I appreciate that. In the menu, there is uh, uh, two ways to go either photo or video and i like to take photo with this one not to make the video but i will do some video as well so you can easily see that and uh, it's a touch screen and i really like that i just touch it and there it is it's no problem at all and i can feel that it's easy, it's easy for me just to touch the screen and then I come directly to the point that I would like to be. If I go example with 125 in time, uh, I can go between 60, 125 and 250 on the big uh, buttons on the top. But with this little one, I can actually do small, small steps when it comes to time and that's very, very, very good. So there I can go to 125, 130, 140, so it's not that big steps as it is in the, the big one, the big button here in the top. When they come to the aperture is go with between 1.7 and 16 and I think that's good enough. That's really really good and that's cover almost everything I would like to do with the camera. This one it's a fix, fix lens. It's 28 millimeter and it's 1.7 when it comes to the aperture. So with a fix, fix lens it's not possible to change that lens at all. Inside the camera there is a green line and it's really easy to see the horizontal line so everything get in line and that's really 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 nice and I really enjoy that it's so easy to get in line with the horizontal and that's really really good for me the viewfinder I can either go to see what I would like to photo shoot in the viewfinder here or in the back in the screen the only thing in the screen is I cannot change it it's it is what it is so I cannot flip or flop it like that it is what it is and that's a little bit of shame it's a little bad I think When it comes to the menus in this camera, I can see that it's quite easy to understand. You can change the language and then it's more or less up to you. But English, it's, it's I mean, that works perfectly actually. And 
it's easy to understand what to do, what you can find and how you change the menu so, you, so it uh, fits for your kind of photography. When it comes to uh, the video, it's quite the same. You can get into the menu, you can change what's in it for you and you can do that quite easy and that's that's really really nice actually. It's chilly out there, it's really cold and my hands is freezing but it's, uh, it's a really lovely day and I really enjoy to take photos with this one. It's, uh, it's so easy and I have to, uh, I don't have to focus so long time with the camera it really fast and it finds the focus right on and when I go with uh, manual focus it's uh, I have to say it's a little bit not complicated but it's <sighs> It's a little bit hard to know where you are. Either you touch the uh, aperture ring or you touch the focus ring and you have to start to think okay what 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 is it what kind of ring is it I touch right now and that's maybe something that you can get used to if you use manual focus and so on. Uh, for me, it's much easier in this camera to use the automatic focus and change the dot here with the touch screen and see where I would like to go. There is one more issue with this camera, or two more issues I have to say. One is this red dot. I mean, everyone who knows anything about cameras know that a red dot will mean a lot of money or at least more money than normal and they have done a real good job Leica with this little little dot but I have discovered when I do the street photography it's better for me to take tape black tape and put something and to take the put the tape over this red dot then it's been mere incognito because people start to look not at me not at the camera but on that red dot and then they know this is something they can steal or they can take from me the other one is the price I think they are quite overpriced it's a wonderful camera nothing to say about that but the price is too much if you would like to have a small full frame camera that take great landscape pictures great street photography and pretty great uh, portrait photography I think this is the one and then it's worth the extra money you pay for it if you think that you would like to change the lens this is not the camera for you with the Leica camera in front of me and see if uh, everything is okay, if it's respond correctly. I have an ISO uh, between 800 and 1600, so I've tried a uh, different kind of ISO. When it comes to the menu, it's quite easy. Here I, it's a touch screen as I told you before. So I can go and done the video or I can go photo like that. If I would like to get into the menu, I just put that, push that menu one more and then I go here, up and down. I can do my own user profiles like this. I can do the exposure metering like this. It's no problem at all. And it's quite easy to do all this menu things I need for my photography as well. If I push this one, not 
mm, slide it, push it. I can go within different kind of menus. If I go out from this menu here now, so like this, and if I push it again, then I go to ISO. And then I can easily go from 50, of course, of auto, and up to 50,000. I don't like 50,000. I often not go over 1,600 because this will be a bad picture if I go over it. Leica has focus on two kind of formats. It is sorry. It is the let's see if I can find it the D G G and G or the JPEG. You can also uh, through Leica's own uh, app uh, put your smartphone iPhone or something or whatever you can connect it with the camera I've been trying to do that and it went really smooth it just took me five ten minutes and then I was connected and I was transferred over the picture I've been taking from this camera to my phone and that's pretty much it actually here is the aperture it's really easy to change it like this the macro I go like that or to that. As I told you before, the one thing I stress, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit stressed about is this one here. And I think they have figured it out really well. Maybe it's not me that figured it out, but I have to push that one in and then go with the manual focus. So, and if I, stand and do the landscape photography it's a it's really easy to mix the focus ring and the aperture ring like this so so therefore i quite of, often have this as an automatic focus so this is locked so i can easily change the aperture ring instead of make it wrong in the back of the camera see if I can do this right here we have the battery and I open it with this one push a little bit and then I have the battery here I put it in like that and here I have the memory card push that out and here's the memory card and as I said before I really really miss to have two memory cards in this camera For me, I think it's quite okay. It's really, I can really recommend the camera. I can uh, travel with it, I can go with it, and I can have it in my backpack together with my Hasselblad when I do the landscape photography. And I think it's really, really good. Have a good time and bye bye.